Hey folks, Joseph is the Boy here. Doing a new movie review this week, which I actually saw this movie a couple weeks back, and it just recently came out on Blu-ray this week, called Get Out, which is the new film by writer and director, who's a comedian, Jordan Peele. For those who don't know, he was in last year's uh, Keanu with Keegan-Michael Key, you know, the stars of Key and Peele, the TV series on Comedy Central, as well as being the former cast members of Mad TV. Yeah. And I love Keanu last year. That was one of the best comedies of 2016. And it was a big surprise for me. And this one is a bit of a surprise wasn't expecting much. I mean, I, I heard a lot of good things about this movie, but at the same time, it does make me feel a bit squeamish. Because, well, this is a different kind of horror movie that it, it is a bit racist. I mean, they're going for stereotypes this time around. And it, it is a bit of a mix of, uh, of other films like Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, which is a drama from 1967, uh, with a mix of Society from 1989, which actually came out in 1992 in the U.S., and in a mix of The Stepford Wives, the original Stepford Wives, not the remake from 2004 that Frank Oz directed, Yeah, because I prefer the original. So, um... I gave the movie a shot, and it's not as bad as I thought. Um, it is a bit overrated, I'll give you that. I mean, it has 99% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's very high, I can't believe it. And this is a big surprise uh, for both Universal and Blumhouse Productions, yeah, Jason Blum's production company, because they just did one of the worst movies that I've saw in 2015 called Unfriended. And I hated that movie. And I still do. <laughs> so at least this is a big surprise for me that they released this from that company. Um, I, I know they probably did release another film. Also, yes, they did release that terrible Gem and the Holograms too. Yeah, they co-produced them. So yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, I, I, I don't want to get into that situation because they're, they're both terrible films. But this is better than those two, that's for sure. Way better. But it does have some issues. That's okay. Uh, but I can see what the film was going to go for. Well, anyway, it stars Daniel Kaluuya was in the anthology series uh, Black Mirror that's on Netflix, Sadlan Adams, Allison Williams, who actually played Peter Pan in Peter Pan Live that was on NBC back in 2014 or 15. Uh, yeah, 2014. Bradley Whitford from the short-lived TV series on Fox called The Good Guys with Colin Hanks, Tom Hanks's son. And I know he was also in the film Robocop Free, which was a terrible sequel to Robocop. It also had Stephen Roof, also from Robocop Free. But he went on to do uh, Office Space and Dodgeball. He also went on to do the TV series King of the Hill. Catherine Keener, best known for films like... Uh, being John Malkovich, Where the Wild Fiends Are, uh, Death of Smoochie. She even had a horror film called uh, Survival Quest from 1989. That was her earlier role. So this is interesting that she's doing a horror movie. Just like how she did it uh, back then. Caleb Landry Jones, who has been in films like X-Men First Class and he was also in that horror movie The Last Exorcism which I didn't care for not even its sequel too 
And yes, he's in The Social Network, which I didn't care for that movie at all. And of course, No Country for Old Man. And super bad. Lil Ray Howie, Betty Gabriel, Marcus Henderson, Lakeith Stanfield, Erica Alexander, and Geraldine Singer. And it's written and directed by Jordan Peele. The movie begins when a young interracial couple named Chris Washington, who's a black photographer, played by Daniel Kaluuya, along with his girlfriend, who's white, named Rose Armitage, who's played by Allison Williams. They decided to take a trip to meet Rose's parents before they accidentally ran over a deer, which causes a broken tail light and a damaged right rear mirror. So once Chris had found out about that, uh, the cop arrived and actually was forced to have Chris uh, show his identification, but Rose refuses to let that happen, so there you go. So then when they finally arrive, Chris had met Rose's parents, Dean and Missy, both played by Bradley Whitford and Catherine Keener. Dean is a neurosurgeon, while Missy is a psychiatrist and a hypnotherapist. Along with her brother Jeremy, who is a complete nut and a crazy guy, yeah, played by Caleb Landry Jones. But at the house, everyone was trying to make Chris feel very comfortable and welcome. But suddenly he's being disturbed by the odd behaviors of a black groundskeeper named Logan Keene and a housekeeper named Georgina. They're both played by Lakeith Stanfield and Betty Gabriel. So during that night, Chris had started to talk to Missy about his mother, who died of a hit and run car crash when he was 11 while he was watching TV. Suddenly, Missy had hypnotized him while he was feeling completely froze. He was, um, he sat on the chair, feeling very numb, couldn't move, and he was in tears, all shocked. And he wants up all the way down deeper in a sunken place. Like he was going completely all the way down into the water. That was really messed up. But Chris thought that it was a nightmare. Once he woke up, he went outside just to have a smoke. Till suddenly he spotted uh, Logan who just uh, ran as fast as he could. Yeah, he was just uh, doing his morning exercise, you know, jogging. And so he, he feels like that maybe the best way for him was to quit smoking, and he did. So the next day, the guests had arrived for the Armitage annual get-together with various older white couples taking an uncanny interest in Chris. So Chris had finally met uh, the groundskeeper Logan Kane, which as we least as we suspected because uh, Chris's best friend who's a TSA officer named Rodney Rod Williams who's played by uh, Lil Rail Howry Hexy had uh, suspected that he has his hypnosis and his unusual behavior. It also turns out that Logan Kane is actually has a dark secret of his own, as it comes as a surprise that he might be the same man named Andre Hayward, who's been abducted through the suburbs uh, at night. Chris was also feeling very suspicious. He began to find out in the bedroom that his phone was being unplugged. It turns out it was Georgina. And this is where she gives Chris a very uncomfortable smile that he wasn't expecting. Well, anyway, things were going pretty well 
while Chris was like going around taking pictures and when the Dean decided to offer them a picture a photograph that also includes uh, Logan King something mysterious starts to happen as he didn't expect it because um, earlier in the film he's, he began to suspect that both Logan and Georgina are acting very strange and weird that this is not something that that we're hoping for them to to deal with because they were always happy all the time but we just don't seem to know it but when he took a picture of Logan Kane there was a big flash and suddenly he snaps and started hysterically yells at Chris by telling him to just like the title of the movie get out he warns them to get out so that way he'll be able to escape by this big couple right there because that's what leads to that dark secret that's going to happen of course Dean thought that Logan had an epilepsy so Missy decided to help him out by hypnosing him so he can go back to normal yeah, which I didn't believe that either. I mean, there, there's no way that he has an epilepsy seizure that's affecting him. Yeah. And considering he had a nosebleed, too. So, Chris was feeling very skeptical about that and decided to warn uh, Rose that something mysterious is about to happen. And he decided that uh, the best way... For for him was to decide to pack up and leave the next day because just before that um, we begin to find out that uh, Dean was holding a mysterious auction and the blind art dealer named Jim Hudson was placing the winning bet by playing bingo which actually shows a picture of as we suspected, Chris. So, so that's going to lead to bigger problems because now Chris is being so suspected between this dark secret of, of this family that it was up to him to find a way out before it's too late. And I'm going to keep it that way. And I'm just going to say this. It's a really strange but very intense uh, horror film that I have to admit it was well made coming from Jordan Peele. So he did a great job. So this is the first movie that he actually did and hopefully he'll do his next film later on in his career. Maybe he'll do some more comedies too as well as horror films. Hell, maybe some, some other types of genres. But I gotta admit, it was a bit um, racist at times. I mean, that was my only nitpick I have with the film. But at the same time, it's a great cast. Uh, I thought Daniel Kaluuya did a great job. It's great to see that that this time it's the lead male instead of being the, the female. By like Bradley Whitford, Kevin Keener, Alison Williams, and Stephen Roots. I mean, that, that's really something right there. And they all did a great job. And, and it's great to see uh, Alison Williams actually doing a, a different movie this time, considering that she just did a, uh, a live uh, play that aired on NBC uh, for, for kids. So now she's actually playing a different role from her. And, and that's... <laughs> That's really something. Um, it has a very chilling score by uh, Michael Avells. I mean, it does definitely has a feel of what a horror film was like. Um, even has some practical effects. There's some blood in the movie, and 
there's even that uh, one special effect that I did enjoy was when Chris was already feeling very frozen. He was actually scratching the, all that cotton from the chair. He was all froze, stiff, and and numb. And then suddenly we get to see the effect where there's a TV screen with Missy stirring the, the tea on a teacup. This is a way for him to be hypnotized. And then he winds up falling all the way deeper down into a second place. So the whole thing is like a bigger dark space. And, and, he, were, and he fell, he was like floating all the way up in the air. And he was going completely deeper and deeper and deeper all the way down into the water. That is like, whoa. <laughs> that, was, that, that effect was really, really impressive right there. And, um, yeah, and, and it had a lot of comedy elements, uh, which includes was the TSA officer, Rod Williams. Yeah, of course, played by Lil, well, Howery. You know, he comes up with all these funny jokes, all this other stuff that... <laughs> That was just hilarious, especially when he was trying to warn um, the officers of, and the detectives about uh, about a suspicion that's about to happen, and yeah, you know, they all laugh. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, and um, yeah, I it's. Um, but uh, despite of some of the issues I have with the racism and all that that went into it, that kind of does make you feel a bit squirmish. Um, but I'll be honest with you though, if Chris was uh, white, Hispanic, Asian, or any other stereotypes, same goes with the Amatish family, it wouldn't make any difference. It, it, because ch chances are, you know, they did have an experiment of their own, and and they probably will do some crazy shit that's happening. So I don't know. Um, so I, I I would understand that, but in a way, um, because I don't like talking about politics, and I, I hate politics. I don't want to get into this political correctness that they're going for. I mean, then again, why can't everything be politically incorrect? God, I mean, especially what's going on these days. Yeah, I just, I just don't want to deal with that anymore. But other than that, though, it's, it's definitely um, a big surprise for me. It's a, it's a very effective horror film, refreshing, and I'm glad to see that it got the praise it deserves. Something I didn't expect. It, it definitely kept the edge of my seat. And. Well, there you go. So that's the movie Get Out, and I give that movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.